It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day, and today is annual maintenance day in Chula Vista. Hannah and I were just discussing, because I can never remember, how long ago did we install this garden? Uh, and we're thinking six, seven years ago. So let's see. Let's talk about, about what's growing on here. A couple of things to point out. The color in this Euphorbia Millii Ready Red. Look at this. It's stunning. Now, milieis are a plant that I have such a love-hate relationship with. Be, I mean, I love the plant, but I don't have success with it everywhere I plant it. I'd say it's probably 75-25. Um, there are places I've put this where it has just not done well. And that is, I mean, if you want to look up beautiful Euphorbia milii, ready red in the dictionary, that picture would be there for sure. Um, Microclimate, let's see, this is uh, east, west, south, so it's kind of south facing. Um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing special really about this microclimate. And then also another thing to consider and look at is this Kalanchoe orgialis. Another plant that I love but have mis mixed success with. This is, you know, just sits here day in and day out, year in and year out. And I haven't really done anything with it. I'm just cutting back some dead wood right now. But my goodness, these leaves have literally patinaed. I mean, they are a red and they are very leathery, these older leaves. And then look at the newer leaf. It's the, the copper. This is copper spoon is the common name, but it's just, I, I think it's stunning. I mean, wow, 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 wow. Just right plant in the right spot for sure. Um, you know, I know that this installation is dated too, like with these moonshines. I don't use this plant anymore. Um, it just pups too much. Uh, and I don't know the blue if you're gonna go do this just do blue glow and be done with it um, also I'm not a big striata girl and this is why I mean this is what they do they, they the dieback of the under leaves um, is really prolific this one's okay because it's so puffed out you can't really see all of the dead leaves but these don't come off you have to cut them and it is just a tremendous amount of work. And it just never looks that great. This one is okay. Uh, this Medio Picta Alba it's so cool. is a really, really cool plant. This is one that isn't supposed to pup. And it's supposed to be a medium-sized agave. And those rules are definitely um, ripe for yeah for debate look at back here hannah There's so many pups. it's pupping and looks like well no i guess there is a little bit of variegation in that pup i was gonna say it like it reverted but this you know this is pupping also it looks like at some point this got hit with snout weevil see this here those those that damage um tight up top of the leaf there's also some right here, a big hole right there. See what a snout weevil will do is it burrows in to the apex in this area here. And then it lays its eggs and then the eggs feed on the roots and then the whole thing dies. But if it got treated and killed the larva in time, you would have this scarring, but the plant would be viable. So that's the case with this is it did get hit with snout weevil got treated in time killed the snouts and were golden but that's what that's all about uh this little potatorum back here is adorable love potatorum and this agave perii is stunning now this is another one the truncata some of these pop like crazy others don't looks like we got really lucky here this is a fairly slow growing agave that is absolutely beautiful in the garden. And there used to be a 
Euphorbia trigona here that just hated life. It hated it here. So we got rid of it and put in this aloe Hercules and she's doing great. The Portolacaria afrovirigata, you know, after seven years, again, you know, this variety tends to want to grow upright and I really want it to spread. So we're constantly trimming and pruning and trying to keep it as a carpet. Uh, the aloe Cameronii in this garden are great. Here's another reason why I love, hate blue elf, aloe blue elf. Here's a stand of aloe blue elf that is not happy doesn't like it. Look at that. It looks terrible. It just looks terrible. So I brought some Echeveria harmsii to put here instead. And then here's another stand of that moon glow that eventually we're just going to have to dig it out because it's just not going to get smaller, right? Pretty barrel cactus, a little variegated attenuata. That's cute. And then back here, we have a Dazzlerian longissimum. It's so funny, you know, how you evolve. I would know better now to never plant a longissimum this close to a driveway, now that I understand this plant and how big it gets. So this, I think we can probably just move it over, right? I mean, there's no reason why it can't go right here and then be fine. Yeah, I'm sure that'll work. Um, and it's okay right now, but in another year or two, we'll have to deal with it. Then our pots, this one still looks so good. This is an aloe, what is it? I don't know. It's a, it's, it's got, it looks very dichotoma-like, the trunking of it. The leaves are very, very smooth. It's like a little miniature Hercules almost. And with this little stand of variegated podatorum looks, or cream, pu cream spike maybe? No, not cream spike. Anyway, this little aloe, it looks so stinking good. Loving that. And this, uh, this pot here, this trigona, the client and I have decided that we like it. I mean, it's clearly struggling, but hanging in there and it's got character and look at these blue elf these blue elf are very happy so who knows this little pot right here this talavera pot we're going to take this all apart today and replant it i brought some pretty little um little fluffy things to replant this pot so we'll take care of that and then we've got uh mel and miguel over here Pulling weeds, pulling weeds. Um, again, here we've got a beautiful aloe ferox that has gotten really, really large right next to this Pacopodium lumerii. So this is another plant that we'll need to rehome at some point, probably in another year or so. And it looks like this, this, um, Oh my, what is this, Hannah? The, it's not a fish hook, it's uh, since it's so discolored, it's, I can't even remember. Ferox, uh, um, this cactus. Looks like it tried to die and then thought better of it. There's no active uh, wound or anything on it. It just looks like it was struggling, um, but it's interesting. It's very, very interesting. It has a tremendous amount of character. Here we have the dreaded agave quadricolor, Sans Pups. Yes, I have two team members. I have Viv and Val that come here every month and do maintenance and they keep this thing depupped. It's job security. It's stunner, isn't it? But maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. Um, this Pacopodium is really, really gorgeous. And then we've got another Dazzlerian longissimum back there that's very, very happy. And some little Cynthia giddy, giddy aloes here. So all in all, I'm gonna send Greg over to Southwest Boulder and Stone and grab some bags of this Cali Gold 3 8 for fluffing up. We had torrential rains yesterday and last week here in San Diego. And the rock has held really well. Um, I don't see any runoff at all, so that's good. But I think we'll also grab a few bags of burgundy three quarter just to fluff this up. 
Shall we check out the back? All right, um, back here in the back, uh, this uh, neighbor will is soon to be replacing this fence, so we are not going to touch up any of the rock back here today. Um, this, what looks to be Allomarlothii, was actually in a pot, and it was in this blue pot right here. And the uh, Viv and Val took it out of the pot and put it in the ground. This was a big agave. I think it was a tight noda, and it bloomed out. So that was a great idea. This is going to get really big. Um, oh, yes, the uh, Petalanthus fracteatus is looking good. Our, our Echeveria Sahara's not so much. We'll, uh, we'll work on those a bit. And over here, another one of the moon glows. Looks like it may be thinking about blooming out. Don't know for sure, but check out this this aloe. Oh my god, it's one of those Andy Griffith ones or whatever. <laughs> Hannah's all said, one of those Andy Griffith ones. Not Andy, Kelly. Kelly. Um, yes, it's uh, biggest I've ever seen. Oh, weird. What? No. Yeah. No. That is not an agave bloom. That must be something else growing from the bottom. How bizarre. It almost looks like Grevelia. But here's, uh, here's another Portolacaria afrovirigata doing its thing. And this Allioaudia procera is a run amucker. Um, and we have cut many branches off of this over the years. I love how she hugs this giant barrel cactus. And this client is just gonna let all of those pups go. You can crack the pups off and you know propagate that way, or you can leave them on the mom, and then it just grows into this big, beautiful stand of, of a chino cactus. And that's what she's gonna do, which I fully support. Look at all of these Cynthia Giddy. These um, got hammered with the rain, so they really greened up but they turn a beautiful orange when they're stressed. And this is the Allopherox to end all Allopherox. <clears throat> uh, concern is that it's going to, you know, infringe on the walk path here at some point. And so I'm just hoping, I, every year I tell Cindy, our, our client, oh, it's not gonna get any bigger. That's, that's it. And every year it gets bigger. So uh, yeah. Stunning, stunning, stunning plant, uh, but just insanely huge. More Saharas, which look like they could benefit from being reset. I think I'm going to dig all of these out and move them back around this rock outcropping. And then this Dazzlerian longissimum has decided to throw off heads. Yes, which is a little unusual. I've seen that happen when they've been more mature. As you know, if you grow Dazzlerian longissimum, they slowly over time grow on a trunk. So that's stunning. And this Bacarnia recurvata, I would say it's doubled in size since we moved it. I climbed up there last time, remember? Yeah. Up. Hannah actually climbed this thing to clean. Um, we moved this from over along the sidewalk over here on the side of her house when we uh, when we did the installation and yes I think that this has absolutely at least doubled in size then this cotyledon was really pretty for a really long time but this is it's run its course so what I'm going to do is pull that out and dispose of it and then I'm going to move this really really cool agave look it almost looks like somebody spilled paint on it yeah. the pink I'm gonna move this gorgeous agave over here because this is feeling a little cramped to me. So that's the plan there. Then over here, we've got more Petalanthus fracteatus, which um, are being maintained very, very nicely. Uh, another Mediopicta alba that is, yeah, getting a little too big. First world problems, I know. Um, eventually this may need to be replaced too and something that won't get so big put in its spot. This one looks so cool. Yeah, 
this um, it's a silver dollar plant or um, it's a uh, it's a crassula um, orbiculata right yeah. looks great you know so these tend to get kind of flopsy mopsy but this one has stayed it maintained its shape and it looks very very nice I love the texture of this another extremely happy milii uh, quadricolor that's doing what quadricolors do. Pup, 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 pup. Look at these Cynthia Giddy. This is the same plant as the one I showed you over on the other side that had turned green. Microclimates. And I brought, she wants us to take this milii out of this pot um, and put in another cactus. So I brought, I brought a cactus from home. This was uh, one that I have growing in my yard. And I'm going to install that in there. And these variegated Apuntia with the Antisipolitica have defied my wildest expectations. That looks so stinking cool back there against the pool. We're going to get in there and pull some weeds. But wow, you know, I love that. And then we have one more area to check out over here. Okay. Right? Yep. All righty, we put um, Pulo Soceris Azurus in here and they turned bright yellow. Got some sort of a fungus. Um, so we replaced them. We thought, you know, I know it's crazy to, you know, do things the same way and expect different results, but we thought, no, we're gonna try. And this latest bunch looks pretty darn good. They're still, you know, pretty blue. You can barely see them around all the milli eyes. These are little one gallon milli eyes when I planted them. I never dreamed they would get so big, but real happy with this. The Crassula undulatas haven't grown as fast as I thought they would. You know, this is a fantastic hedge and that was kind of the idea there. Then we've got a Dracaena Draco in the back corner that isn't in any big hurry either. Yeah, these are these are doing a little little more here. I think um, with all the rain that we've been getting, we should see some dramatic improvement on the growth of the ungees. Then over here, we have this beautiful potted speciosa. This is such a gorgeous one-off of an aloe. Oh my gosh, it's so buttery. And what I'm doing right now is a little bit of tip back. I'm um, just taking off the dead tips that's just an aesthetic thing don't love the way that looks so we'll just cut off the little dead parts and let the plant continue to be what it is and do what it does all right we will catch you at the end and we'll show you our progress okay so it took greg hannah myself mel and miguel the better part of the day but we got all the weeds pulled every single one um all of the plants groomed. There wasn't any evidence of any disease or pests on anything, which was very, very encouraging. So it was just a question of deadheading and removing um, understory leaves. Oh, it looks like we could use a little more berg. Do we have more berg? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see if we can get some more burgundy right there. Uh, and then we came through when we were done with that and sprinkled down some fresh rock. You can see here where we could definitely use a little more burgundy there. We took the spent blooms off of the ferox. So it looks like the decision to take them both was made. Okay, good. We brush off all the, usually brush off all the leaves to fall in there. Yeah, and brush the, the leaves off. Hannah tightened up the Saharas. Those look so beautiful again. Looks great. And we moved this fantastic agave from, like I said earlier, from over here to here. It was actually over there on the other side. It was there from here to here. And right, sometimes it's the little things, isn't it? That looks so good. We didn't need to add anything there at all. It's so much cleaner, so much tighter. So, so happy with that. This whole bed in here 
just looks so tight, so good. All the weeds and the detritus and the leaves all gone. Um, Hannah planted the little cactus in the blue pot and I'll show you what she did with the millie that was there. Greg got in here and pulled all of the weeds. I love the Forbia antisyphilitica with the cactus. There's something about that combination that really appeals to me. It is considered a spurge, the antisyphilitica, so it can it can have kind of a bamboo effect, you know, where it runs. So it needs, you know, some containment for it to keep its shape, but it's slow and it, you know, it's not labeled invasive. So it's just, you know, just so you know, you're not going to plant it there and forget about it. It will need it will need a little maintenance, but it's yeah, it pulls easily, and it's a it's a great, great, great plant. The broccoli? Yeah, we moved. The broccoli. Oh yes, look at the little broccoli head. Isn't that so cute? Um, this rock was crowding the peri eye, so the guys shoved it back a little bit. More weeding all in through here. Hannah saw some aphids on the vegetables, so she gave it a good rinse with the hose. And I moved this euphorbia was in the little blue pot and it was getting a little crowded. So I planted it into this blue pot, took what was in there, rehomed it, and then planted this really cool little mammillaria in the, in the blue pot. I just love how the brown picks up the brown in the edge of the pot too. That's a really, really nice pairing. And it was an accident. So I'm not taking credit, but boy, it sure looks good. Yes, and the coin plant. See, that vine, it's sticking to the house all by itself. Isn't that amazing? And Cindy just lets it do what it wants. It's crazy. It's so cool. Yeah, and these little potted things that we did. Now, this little Myrtillo cactus crest, you can tell might benefit from a little more sun than it's getting if you it's sort of annulated um but it's cool you know i don't hate it at all and these little mammillaries are so funny down here they have done nothing since i planted them i'm wondering if they're even alive i don't think so they look so cool skeletons yeah i think these are these might be mammillaria skeletons in this pot i should have should have picked up on that a little earlier, but I'll deal with that another time. And remember my signature? I was so all about Pacopodium lumerii and barrel cactus. Um, this is getting tight, so we might even be able to move that cluster of a chino cactus down into this pot. And this is just too funny for words. It's alive. And just living its best life. Then over here, I spent a lot of time over here. This is a very neglected side of the yard. So I pulled all the weeds. I cleaned out in between all the plants. That milii that was in the pot over against the fence, Hannah planted right here. It's the perfect place. It looks so good. And then I just kind of Jackson Pollocked with the black pebble. I had originally done a ribbon years ago. Too hard to maintain it. So I just kind of scattered those around. Uh, but this is... Yeah, this just looks great, Han. Shall we check out the front? This has maintained itself so beautifully, this front area, with little to no intervention. Other than pull some weeds and refresh the rock, we didn't really do anything out front at all, except we did, I did trim down the portalacaria a little bit, and I put some... Echeveria harmsii ruby slipper in where that blue elf was right there. Um, then Miguel came in and trenched down really deep and wide all through here. She had a little bit of, a, it was minor, but still a little bit of runoff it was coming down through here. So we trenched deep, backfilled about halfway with the gravel, and we'll see if that doesn't do the trick. We, or I, I should say, I uh, didn't need to do a darn thing with this pot or with the one in the corner, but I did completely redo this little pot, which was just so sad. So I took all the blue elf out of it and uh, just popped in some, some fresh plant material. It looks great. And then a lot of time was spent over here too, weeding, refreshing, um, 
as far as plant maintenance. You might wonder, if you're wondering why the Aluaudia is naked, um, that's just a really good question and I don't really have an answer for you because we've had a lot of water. We had a lot of rain. I don't know, it might have got cold here. Yeah, it might have got cold here one night, but it's alive, it's just dormant. So it'll leaf back out in the spring. I have no, no worries. And we uh, left one of the beautiful red Cameronii up there. And then I had Miguel put another one back here. There was a um, mangave here and wasn't feeling it. It had bloomed out, didn't look too great. So I had him put the Cameronii there. Uh, yeah, that's about it, isn't it? So thanks for watching. Thanks for following. We remember next week we will be in Calabasas on a brand new installation. This has been Laura Eubanks reporting for Team DFS with maintenance in Chula Vista and your succulent tip of the day. Bye, guys.